chairman of the Public Safety Committee, James Rumfeld. I'm going to call the Public Safety Committee meeting to order. Okay, have a roll call, please. Mr. Havey. Mr. Rumfeld. Here. Mr. Barnes. Present. Mr. Sear. Here. Mr. Demick. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Mr. Healy. Here. Mr. Stockin. Here. Seven present, <clears throat> one absent. Okay, I have a motion to approve the minutes from February 2nd. So moved. Second, Harris. Motion by Legislator Demick, second by Harris. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And Mr. Santana, J.R. Santana Carter. Yep. A question not associated with uh, report, Mr. Chairman. Just curious, over on the court side uh, with the mask situation, masks are, are gone over in the court or no? They're still in places. They should be close by. Preferably on. I don't think anyone's being um, reported to be removed from the courts or anything of that nature. They slipped down, but it's still a mandate. It is. Okay. Thank you. It's already been approved by ILS and their funds in the budget to add this part time position would achieve the goals that's been uh, outlined as base load reduction. Doesn't mean that the existing uh, caseload will be attorneys without work. It just allows the other attorneys additional time and resources to uh, expend on their existing caseload, and it would free me up a little bit more to deal with the administrative tasks. So moved. Motion by Legislator Harris. Do we have a second? I will second that. Second by Legislator Sear. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, thanks. Just wondering if this part as a part-time position is eligible for the same stipend that the other attorneys get? Uh, no. It wouldn't be, this individual wouldn't be regularly on call, um, per se. But they would be required to cover it needed. It's an on-call position? No, it's not. But the ones that receive or receive stipend are readily on the calendar to be on call for weekends at a time. Thank you. I don't I don't have a copy of the the request to create and fill. Do, do, am I looking at the wrong agenda packet? It is. Yeah, it's in here. Legislator Burdick. Um, is the funding for this only for the one year? Will this be ongoing funding or is it something we're going to have to look at to see if the county's going to have to end up funding it. It's ongoing through indigent legal services. I think they've been diligent with our, because it's a reimbursement process. So the county pays and they reimburse us. They've been um, fulfilling their obligation of reimbursement in a very timely manner. Um, I think that's another requirement. Um, based on the litigation that led to all that funding, I don't believe it's going away anytime soon. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> do you have a person in, uh, lined up for this position? I have someone lined up. The <clears throat> individual, because uh, it's not set in stone yet, I don't want to give the name, but I'll give a little uh, background that the person has over 25 years of experience in criminal defense law and prosecution work. Uh, this individual has been highly sought after, not only by my office for part-time employment by other law offices in order to do work on a more consistent basis. Um, like I said, I think if I said the person's name, a lot of you may be familiar with the individual 
in this community in an adjoining county. I don't think y'all will be that familiar because the person's bread and butter is criminal defense. So y'all wouldn't know him that uh, uniquely. And the other thing is the person, this would most likely be the first, if all of this goes as planned, the first assistant public defender uh, that's a veteran. One more question, <coughs> Miss. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Brown. I was just going to follow up. <clears throat> Bottom line is that uh, if this is approved, uh, that your person will be on board uh, by the end of this month? Would be on board by uh, beginning or mid-April. Okay, thank you. Yes, this would still need to pass through personnel, then ways and means, and then have a resolution. So it will take most of the month of March to get this process done, and then Mr. Carter could hire probably uh, end of March, early April. Ms. Knapp, how does this salary compare to uh, the salaries and part-time salaries in the district attorney's office? Well, we don't have a salary for this position yet. This will have to go to personnel, and I believe our personnel officer will make a recommendation there. Mr. Carter has budgeted up to 70000 but I, I don't know if that's the recommendation that our personnel officer will make. And what, what, will have what, a final. Is, what is the salary for a part-time district attorney right now? Well, we have two. Um, well, actually, we have three different uh, part-time district attorneys, and I... Off the top of my head, 80, 70, and 40, 47 or 49. I'd have to pull it out to, to see. That's depending on hours, basically? Theoretically, yes. Thank you. I'd just like to add that I can uh, attest for the public defender's office here. They do an excellent job compared to other counties. I get to deal with them on my job, and uh, they are overworked and overstretched, so I think it's a needed position. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I call a question then. Is that? I call a question for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Lucky, Emergency Management and Fire Director. Good afternoon. I just want to highlight a couple of things on the report. Um, as you see at the beginning of the month, we did meet with Alfred State uh, about possibly having an EMS um, EMT class over there. It's very preliminary, but everything looks positive. Um, they have a great nursing uh, program, um, have some additional equipment there uh, that we would love to share back and forth. Um, so we're just trying to get uh, established. Uh, we did meet with Chris on it. Um, it's still very beginning stages, but I think uh, it, where our goal would be for this fall, um, if not by, by next year, definitely. But we've already talked to the state as well. Um, of course, another big thing that was happening was our flooding. Uh, here on the 17th and 18th, the uh, snow melt and included with the rain caused a substantial flooding in different places. Uh, did have some swift water rescues. Uh, the crews responded and did a great job in those swift water rescues. And uh, if that link worked, that the, the YouTube link, a, a lady was interviewed, she did a great job as a, as a citizen explaining what, what water rescue is and exactly how they came out and rescued her uh, during those events. Um, you see, I did include the, the bar graph there where the, the river crested 11.6. The river never really flooded uh, much out of its banks. Um, it did the cornfields and stuff affecting roadways and stuff like that. It's got to get well over the 11.6, closer to 12, and it starts down in Willing um, at the state line and or in Sio. Um, there's a couple streets in Wellsville that will flood, but as far as uh, general traffic and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is we did work with Jones Memorial. Um, they had a small fire in their transfer switch when they were testing their generator before the ice storm hit. Um, they, they never really lost power per se. They were able to switch over. Uh, there just was a concern with uh, if it needed to switch, would it work? And if it wasn't in the news about the fire department responding, you would have never known anything. Um, the, working with them, we even did a hot wash afterwards uh, on them. They were right on top of it. All their plans work, and, and you could just hear the confidence in them as they talked through their EOC procedures. Um, 
everything seemed to be right off. Uh, they lucked out. There was no COVID patients. There was nobody serious. Um, but there was backup systems in place um, to, to move people off the floor into the OR if they lost the power there. Um, thankfully, they never did. They did have two switch, two shutdown periods for part of the transfer, but everything was um, brought back online and functioning. So they, they executed a great plan, and uh, it was interesting to, to hear it from the outside, um, the stuff you exercise in, in classes um, theoretically and then see it real real time. Anything else? No, that's all I have. Any questions for Mr. Lucky? Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Haley. Yeah, Jeff, um, probably last summer we brought up the subject of uh, utilizing BOCES to train uh, and maybe have a course uh, for EMSs down there. Can you have anything to report on that? Uh, we've been in contact with them. I do have samples of a couple programs. Uh, we have a recruitment and retention a team out of the fire advisory board um, that we're meeting with them in developing that. Um, the one problem that exists right now um, on the fire side is that it's hard to get a, all the programs near us at all, uh, Rochester, um, and the other ones are associated with a community college that has a fire program. And so the, the one year, uh, your junior year when you take firefighting classes is more education classes to continue on in a college. Um, without association, we don't have that type of professor be able to come in. Um, I don't know how much big drug interest we could and you know, how can I attract a community college into that position um, when they might go to another community college. So that's our biggest hurdle right now that we're seeing. Um, we're, we do have a meeting here at the end of the month with all the Western New York, or excuse me, we have two meetings. We have one Western New York and all the fire coordinators. So I hope to learn out more about through OFPC. That's where our initial think was, mm -hmm. which is the class we take as any fireman. Um, see if we can incorporate that in. I was, yeah, I'm wondering even if uh, that couldn't be, uh, uh, you know, if both these couldn't uh, make that part of their criminal justice curriculum. Uh, in some areas that uh, in the professional departments, that's, that's one of the requirements. In addition to your um, law enforcement training, is that you're you're trained in uh, EMS services too? Right. No, nope, that's been under consideration as well. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lucky? Thank you. At the do it and the meeting, I do have the fire advisory board. Okay, okay Mr. Legislator Lee. Uh, any any uh, issues or problems to report, Jeff? No. No. Um, I guess one other thing, I mean, as far as not even on issue side, but another positive thing I forgot to mention was we did handle 123 cellar pumps during the outage um, and the flooding. That's the ones dispatched, and dispatch did a great job um, communicating with everybody, and everybody um, really worked well together. And those are the only ones when they were toned out. So, again, it was very um, informative and cooperative, and I haven't had any kickback of any concerns related to that. Thank you. Thank you. From the district attorney's office, Mr. Jones. Hi, everyone. I don't really have a lot to say. The report kind of speaks for itself. It was a little quieter month last month, but no real reason why. So any questions, I'll take them. But other than that, I'll just rely on the report. Looks good. Thank you, Mr. My, Jones. My theory is swift, effective, and just prosecution, but it's just a theory. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. It's a work in progress every day. All right. Any, any okay. questions for Mr. Jones? All That's right. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Brian Perkins, Stop DWI Coordinator. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I do have my report. Just a couple things I'll I'll hit off of that as we did have our victim impact panel again last week and uh, had 16 attendees there those numbers haven't been picking up quite as quick as i thought and uh looking at things we probably need to take a look at adjusting our fees for it um it's been 25 dollars since i started for sure and i don't know how long linda had it at that before that um but that's it seems like a pretty good deal for somebody that has to has to be there anyway and you know certainly we're not trying to price gouge anybody but at the same time you know if, if our numbers are down we got to make up a little bit something somewhere so uh, we'll take a look and, and start seeing what other 
other counties are charging for theirs because I think we're on the lower end of it anyway and see what we can do about those fees. Um, and then I, I brought it up, I think, right at the end. I just started hearing from uh, Jason with the Jason Cooper with Save a Life Tour that he's going to be coming into the area. And uh, even just this morning, we've still been having some conversations. We're now connected with Ardent Solutions. Uh, they do a lot of traffic safety things with you know the buses and car seats and a whole lot of other programs they do as well. So they're trying to get tied in uh, to be going along as he's coming through the county and, and get into some of the schools. So I'll be joining along with those and, and we'll do some traffic safety this month. Any questions for Mr. Perkins, Mr. Legislator Healy? Yes, Brian, I'm yeah. backing up to your victim impact panels. Sure. And in the out of county residents attend those, do we get, uh, we have quite a few that attend? There's usually only a few um, each month, or each you know each each time we've done it, three to five probably would, would be what we'd have, um, and most of those come from Cat County because Cat County doesn't have a victim impact panel of their own. Every once in a while, there's somebody who might have been picked up in a in another county, but they live down here because it's not actually a residency; it's the court that they got sentenced in um, is where we base the fee on. So if somebody was from New York City, but got picked up while they were in town in Alfred, then, you know, they still pay the $25 because it's based on the court, not, not the residents. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Perkins? Thank you. And thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you. All right. Mr. Starks, uh, probation director. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My uh, monthly report in front of you, not much to highlight there other than uh, the individuals that uh, J.R. Carter's department accepts haven't really filtered on down to us yet, so uh, <laughs> not quite sure why that is, but uh, fortunately our numbers are um, fairly low, to be honest with you, about as low as they've been ever since I've been in probation for on the adult supervision side. So we keep thinking that, uh, you know, courts are going to start sentencing people to probation and it hasn't happened yet. So we'll see. I think you'll probably be getting an influx. I see the courts are got a lot more people coming in the last. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's what we thought the last six months. And yeah, true. So at some <laughs> point, I'm sure it will happen. So, uh, so I really don't have anything else to add on my monthly report so I'm not sure which you have in front of you first um, probation officer training okay first. so yeah so it might not be it may not sound like the most optimum time to ask to fill for to fill a position but we are down two officers right at the moment we have one that's been unfilled for about almost two years and another officer that I granted a, a leave of absence and I don't anticipate that person returning. And as I mentioned, um, you know, I think I put in here also that um, uh, somewhere in here there that there's probably going to be some retirements in the department later in the year. So kind of like to get someone in earlier and get them started that we can get their training over with before we kind of get into a crunch. So. Uh, for all those reasons is why I'm asking now to be able to fill that vacant position. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion we fill this position. Motion made. Second. Here, seconded by Harris. Any discussion? All those approved? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's passed. Thank you. And then we have the annual amount of money we get for our ATI programs from uh, DCJS. The $5,835. So moved. Motion by Lester Harris. Seconded. Second by Sally Sears here. Any discussion? All approved? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Approved. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. Right, Healy. Uh, Mr. Starks, uh, can you give us any updates on youth court there? I've uh, uh, haven't been able to keep up with uh, what's uh, been transpiring there in the last uh, couple months. So maybe you could highlight everybody here. Youth courts in a 
the transition period. Uh, two years ago, when COVID shut everything down, we obviously we put it. We hit. We had just hired a new youth court coordinator. COVID shut everything down. That individual got a different job in Pennsylvania. So last fall, I decided it's probably time to try to revive the youth court. And at the end of in November, December, Acasa. Allegheny Council on Alcohol and Substance Abuse was the agency that had uh, oversight of the youth court budget. And they made a determination they no longer wanted to do that because of other uh, work endeavors and obligations that they had. So we had to find a new entity to oversee the budget. And Accord was one of the agencies that we had targeted. And to make a long story short, they agreed to do so. We had to put together a new memorandum of agreement between the Youth Court Advisory Board and Accord that got approved uh, last week and by both entities. And so as of uh, yesterday, Accord is the youth court coordinator will be a part-time employee of Accord. So the individual that we had interviewed back in November and uh, made the decision to hire that person now has to go through a new interview process because of Accord's uh, taking over the uh, that part of it. So we're still at square one. Uh, once we hire somebody or accord to hire somebody, uh, then they can basically we have to start over again because they have to recruit all of the members to fill the positions in the youth court, and then we can start making some referrals. So that's the status of the youth court at the moment. So we've circled right back around to where we were when we started the program about 20 years ago, and when long a, ago. we went, had to go to accord in order to get the thing off the ground, get it started. And we're right back there again. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Starks? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Green, Weights and Measures Director. Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, not a whole lot extra I have to add on my report. Anybody got any questions? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff Whitney. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have a copy of my report if you have any questions. Mr. Chairman, yes. Just yeah. wanted to note that uh, I was disappointed to read uh, your intention not to seek re-election. We certainly appreciate everything you've done for Allegheny County, and uh, of course, we're confident in your replacement, whoever that may be. But thanks for everything. Quest to fill contract with Endeavor. Uh, yes, we're asking for approval to enter into this contract. Uh, if it's approved by the county attorney, I pass it along to the county attorney for her to look over. So we wouldn't obviously do it until she okayed it. But uh, this is something that's new come up, this new MAT, Medical Assisted Treatment Program. We now have to, anybody that comes in who is being treated for drug abuse, we, make, we have to make sure that we keep that treatment going. And uh, this will reduce the cost Instead of giving it a pill every day, we can just give them a shot once a month and they're good. So it's also going to help with security. They can't, there's no way they can mess with the pills or. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Motion by legislator Sear. Second it. Seconded by legislator Healy. Any discussion? Uh, uh -huh. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Harris. Legislator Harris. Just wondering how this, how this works. We're approving him to mm -hmm. seek a contract. What's happening? We, we have the contract. We just passed it along to the attorney to look it over to make sure 
get her approval to sign it. So I'm just looking for permission to sign the contract if she approves it. Thank so permission pending approval by the county attorney. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. M Mr. Mr. Chairman, we upon my review of the contract i will that we will then be bringing forth a resolution for um for approval of the contract as well as for the chairman of the board to sign the contract on behalf of the county of allegheny thank you um, any other discussion all in favor aye, aye. opposed that's passed thank you okay um, i believe the second one is a request to fill the senior account clerk typist yep our so moved. Our, our civil clerk Seconded. is retired. <laughs> is moved by Legislator Harris, second by Legislator Sear. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And That's the last fair. one is a uh, request to fill the corrections corporal position. So moved. Moved by Legislator Harris. Seconded. Second by Legislator Sear. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, and our last one, we have a memoration, a memorandum of explanation to apply for this grant. Uh, I apologize, it came in late, but we just heard about it and we were checking to make sure that we qualified, uh, but it's, we would like to uh, apply for this grant, for this training. So moved. Motion by Legislator Sear. Second. Second by Legislator Demick. Any discussion? It's my understanding that uh, to deal with the time frame, this will need to go to Ways and Means next Wednesday and come off the floor at the board meeting. Yes, we need to turn it. We had to have the application in by March 9th. Okay. We Thank actually you. got permission to extend it to that. <laughs> okay. Because that's still a little late, but we called and they gave us permission. We told them what we had to, what we had to do, and they gave us permission to turn it in a little later than normal. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. That's all, all right. I have. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Sheriff. All right. Uh, Clerk of the Board, appointments for Fire Advisory Board. Yes, we received a request from the Fire Advisory Board to appoint their three remaining members, Scott O'Dell, Matthew Cummins, and David Denhoff. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll motion second by it. Legislator Demix, seconded by Legislator Sear. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right. Uh, County Administrator Chris Knapp, request to contract with Joseph Miller. Thank you. We've had an ongoing assigned council um, administration relationship with Mr. Miller. He's been running this program for us since December of 2018. And what I'm looking to do is formalize his administration of the program with a contract that runs through the end of this year, which will allow us time to put out a request for proposals um, for next year. So our, our public defense, we have a, a plan of indigent defense and it runs from public defender. When there's conflicts there, it goes to a, an outside um, corporation that that handles um, conflicts. And if there's conflicts there, it goes to assigned counsel. So this is the last leg of our um, plan of indigent defense. And it is important that we have that because a number of referrals end up there. And we're just looking to have a contract through the end of the year with Mr. Miller. We have a motion. Yeah, motion. Uh, Legislator Healy. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. We have a motion to go into a brief, brief attorney client session. Do we have a second? Second. Or a second. All right. So 